This is the second episode of the series on Spring Boot development in Kotlin. In this video, we are going to look into configuration properties. We are going to write our own custom property, then look into switching between different profiles, both in IntelliJ IDEA and in the terminal using the Gradle runner. And lastly, we are going to look into the YAML syntax for configuration properties. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Thanks. We have this starter Spring Boot project that was generated using the Spring Initializer web tool. We added the Spring Web dependency and then the Spring Boot DevTools dependency. And then uh, I also added this greetings REST controller that returns a data class with hello world under the path hello. So if we check it out in a local host 8080 hello. Uh, we, we see this uh, JSON response in here, it's a REST controller. If you want to see step by step how we created it, I recommend uh, checking out the first video in the series. There should be a card at the top or a URL in the video description. And uh, now the way in which we specify configuration properties in Spring Boot is through the application that properties files. Uh, one empty application properties file is already added by Spring Initializer, but there are no properties in here. So if we search on Google for a Spring Boot properties, we see a list of all the properties that can be configured. So we have um, properties for caching, if we are using the Spring caching libraries for mail, if we are using the Spring mail properties, then we can um, also reconfigure the server behavior, like jetty then i think we have some tomcat properties we can we can enable tls for our server etc pretty much all the all the modules in the um, spring boot ecosystem have some properties that can be configured and also we can add our own properties which we are going to do later but for now just for illustration purposes let's say we want to change the port that our server is running on by default, Spring Boot runs on port 8080, and we can see this log line in here. It says Tomcat started on port 8080. But um, if we want to change it, there's this property called server.port. And uh, for now, we're just going to change it to 7070. And uh, now we just need to rebuild the main module. And because we have hot swapping enabled, the server will identify that some um, bytecode changed and it will in the background, it will just swap that um, module without restarting. So now if we refresh the same page, we will get an error because the server is on a different port. And we just changed to 7070 and we see it is working again. So now um, an interesting thing about application.properties is that uh, it can also accept environment variables. And uh, this is useful, uh, for example, if we uh, specify passwords in our application that properties let's say app database passwords because uh, these properties files there will be committed to github so everybody can see but also we don't want to leak our passwords publicly so the syntax is dollar and then curly braces and then the name of the environment variable so let's just call it my port and um, now we need to add a um, environment ver this environment variable to our running configuration. So we go in here in IntelliJ environment variables, we add, let's say, my port, and let's set the value to 7071. We hit apply, and now we need to restart the server because hot swapping doesn't work for running configurations. And uh, we see the log line that uh, Tomcat, Tomcat initialized with port 7071. And if we go in here, we will see that, yeah, the server is running on the new port now. Next, we are going to add a custom property in our configuration. Let's imagine that we want to return our uh, the bill number in the API response. So for this, we are going to start by defining a property in our namespace. Our namespace is a Vlad save that first boot. So Vlad save that first boot, and the property name will be build a number. And for now, uh, let's just call it 1.1 alpha. And uh, what we're going to return the, well, we're going to remove the server port configuration for now, 
and uh, this will move the server back to port 8080. And uh, now for uh, linking our property to the code, in, inside the greetings controller, we will use this annotation uh, value, at value. And uh, in here, we need to specify the name of uh, our property, and the format will be dollar sign and then curly braces and name of the property. So the name of our property is Vlad save that first boot that build number. And uh, a problem specific to Kotlin here is that this is also the syntax of the Kotlin string interpolation. So what Kotlin does now, it's it's going to look for this variable with this name, but it doesn't exist. So we need to escape the string interpolation. So we're going to escape this dollar sign in the beginning. And uh, now uh, we add uh, this as a, a val in a constructor, build number, and the um, type will be string. So now we're going to link it in our API uh, data class response object. We're going to add a field in here as well, build number of type string, and uh, we're going to link it in the response as well. So we just pass the value from the constructor to our response object. Now we rebuild uh, the main module, and this will refresh the server code. And if we go here, now the port is back to 8080. And we see the build number was linked in the response 1.1-alpha. Depending on where our application is running, the configuration properties can vary significantly. For example, if it's running on our local machine, we might want to increase the verbosity of our logging, while if it's running in a staging environment, we will want to hit a different database than the production database. So for managing this, Spring Boot has the notion of profiles, and uh, we're going to illustrate this concept by uh, creating a new profile for a development in which we override this build number to a different version. And here uh, in resources, we're going to create a new file called application-dev.properties, and uh, this will apply to the profile with the name uh, dev, D-E-V. So everything that's after dash and before properties will be the name of the profile. And we're just going to copy this uh, property from application properties in here and uh, change its value to, let's say, 2.0.dev. And the way this works is that Spring Boot, regardless of the profile we are using, it will first load application.properties and then it will load our active profile and will override the value that it found with the ones from application properties. So if we look at the log lines that the server is printing when it started, it says uh, here the profile that it's using. In our case, it says no active profile set and it's using default, which will read from application.properties. And uh, there are two ways in which we can change our active profile. So we're gonna go to edit running configuration in IntelliJ for now. And the first method is by specifying a program argument. And the name of the argument is spring.profiles.active. And uh, we set it to dev. We apply this and we need to stop the server and restart it, stop and rerun because we changed the configuration. And now we see that it says right here, the following profiles are active dev. So it changed our profiles to dev. And if we refresh our API response, we will see that the build number changed as well. And uh, the second method in which we can set our active profile is through environment variables. So for now, let's just uh, remove this argument and we're going to go here in environment variables. And the name of the environment variable will be spring underscore profiles active. And um, let's, let's call it dev2, although we don't have a properties file for dev2, but we just want to see the log line in a server. So now if we restart it, and it will say the following profiles are active, dev2. If you are running Spring Boot in a console using Gradle, the same two methods can be used to switch between profiles. So normally we would just use the boot run 
target in uh, Gradle. And if we set the spring profiles active environment variable, we wait a second. And it says right here, the following profiles are active uh, dev. And uh, the second method is through the argument. So we do Gradle REPL boot run, and then there's this dash dash args to pass uh, arguments. And the name of the argument will be dash dash spring profiles active equals dev. And the same, it will say here, the following profiles are active dev. Spring Boot has an alternative syntax for writing properties file, and that is the YAML syntax. So for illustrating this, we're going to start by removing both properties files. Uh, we're just going to hit delete, and we're going to add a new file called application.yaml, YML. Uh, we can keep both properties in YAML files, but then it will become confusing because some properties will override each other. And I would recommend either going with properties files or with YAML files, but not both at the same time. And in here, of course, we have the YAML syntax. So we're going to have um, our namespace, Vlad say first boot, and then um, our property called build number. And let's just call it uh, 3.0 YAML, just to make sure it works. And we save this file. And now if we rebuild our module and uh, run it, and now if we refresh our API, we see that we get uh, build number 3.0.yaml. In YAML, we can specify multiple profiles in the same file. So in here, um, YAML has this feature. We can have multiple configuration delimited by three dashes. And in here, we'll have a property in the second configuration called Spring Profiles Dev. And um, we're going to have the same um, property from here, but let's just call it uh, 4.0 YAML-Dev. And uh, we're also going to change the active profile in here. We're going to set it from dev2 to dev. Apply, rerun. And if we reload our API, we will see that it used the 4.0 YAML dev property. That's it for today. You can find the source code in the video description. See you next time.